Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the Session 1 Review, Conclusion and Homework presentation, Jesus reviews and concludes the Analyze My Desire to Love and Change session and gives some homework to the participants for the following day. Recorded on the 6th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Well, we come to our last session of analyzing our desire, analyzing our will to love and change. So it's our last session for, and then tomorrow is our break. So got time to do some homework tomorrow. Maybe hit the beach as well if you want to do that, depending on the weather maybe a bit. <laughs> it's quite nice down there, have a bit of a body surf or whatever, it'd be nice. But uh, let's have a look at our review of what we've discovered so far, shall we? If we cast our mind back to the very first presentation I gave you yesterday morning, do you remember what that presentation was all about? It was an introduction to these subjects, so what, what was it primarily about? If we go to Katia, thanks. Um, uh, it was about our feelings about God, what we feel God is. Uh, no, that was more in a second session. So we're talking about the first session. Sorry. <coughs> yep. So if we go back to Joanna, Joanne there and on this side, Nat. So. Um, it was about um, who we should look to for our education in love. Spot on, a source of our education, yes. So we focused on our source of education and there we learned that if our source is no higher than ourselves, then we're pretty stuffed getting an education, <laughs> basically. We need to have a source higher than ourselves if we're ever going to get some education. Yep, so that's number one. And what was the other thing we learned in that particular presentation that was really important to understand? Julie, thanks, down the front. Sorry. No. Mike's coming down. Well, for me, it yep. was because I value my worth by my intellectual... Um, well, that was in the second session too, actually. Oh, was it? Mm. Okay. The first session we're talking at. Um, if we go up the back, right up the back, thank you. Um, um, so... It was about all of our false beliefs about God and that we... That um, was the second session as well. Yeah. It's interesting our recollection, is it? You want thanks? Yep. No, no, straight back behind, sorry. Yep. It's that the world's definition of love is actually sin. Yes, so we learned about the world's definition of love, didn't we? Which, which, which unfortunately has become the majority of our definitions of love as well, is actually from God's perspective out of harmony with love. So this is a major problem for us because uh, we can see that what we've really got to do, so in, in the end what we've got to do is get God's definition of love, isn't it? We want God's definition of love. And this is where most of us have some struggle because we want to hold on to the world's definition of love for lots of emotional reasons. We want to avoid God's definition of love. If you guys could just close the back uh, door, if that's... That'd be good. Thanks. Okay. So that was our first talk. We spent a lot of time on that because it's very important to get the basic principle. Unless we learn from a person who knows about a subject then it's pointless going to get learning from uh, that particular person. A person needs to know about the subject first before we can learn anything from them. And of course, God being the creator of love and the creator of all things, obviously would have quite a lot to know about love and know a lot to know about all things. And so it makes sense to get our education from that source. Right. So then our focus then became, okay, 
If that's where we need to receive our education from, then of course it makes sense to know what, what's blocking our education from that source, doesn't it? And this is where we looked at our second talk, which was, so what, can you remember the subject of it? Anybody? How I feel about love. How I feel about love. Yep. So, so in the second talk was how I feel about love. And remember, I asked you guys at the, to, you know, list all the things you believed about love in that in that discussion. Remember. A and what was the sum total of all those things we believed about love? They were pretty negative, weren't they? <laughs> it's like, gee whiz, it's like, do I really want love if it's that bad? <laughs> yeah. So the basic problem is that we believe or we feel love is bad, really. Right? We feel or believe love is bad. Interestingly, you ask the average person, is it great to fall in love? And they go, yeah, it's great to fall in love. And then after they've been 20 years in that state, like they, they regret the fact that they have, <laughs> generally. <laughs> right? Because there, there are a lot of underlying belief systems about love, which is what we're focused on here. Underlying belief systems about love that are actually false, aren't they? Right? So we feel love is bad, that's the problem. Or we feel love is harmful, really, don't we? In some way. Yep, so that's our problem. Okay, so we feel love is harmful. Then we were asked about God, and what did we find out about that? Can you remember? Pretty negative also. Yeah, pretty negative too. So we feel, we feel God is, well, well how can I sum t total it all into... Well, basic, basically, we feel God's like Hitler, don't we? So what was Hitler? An evil tyrant. Okay, so basically we believe God is an evil tyrant. A bit hard to have a relationship. Uh, tyrant. So. Tyrant. All right. So... This is now a problem. We, in the first talk, we, we decided that we have to receive love, we have to receive education from a person who knows more than we do about a subject, and that person is probably God, given the fact that God created everything. And then in the second talk, we decided that we actually don't want to hear from God at all, <laughs> which is a bit of a problem, which is the reason why the majority of us are rejecting love, rejecting truth, rejecting relationship with God. So in that talk, we basically encourage, we're encouraging you to face your true feelings first. Start feeling them and start discussing those true feelings with God, what you really feel about. But then we discovered something else. You remember what that was? Cardio, thanks. Uh, why I am afraid of change. No, that was the next talk. I mean in this talk. All right, so we come down to Dennis. <coughs> that those thoughts were about our family. Yeah, that they that we we haven't really had a relationship with God. So how do we know God's like that? We don't. And most of us have never really experienced love. So how do we know love's like that? We don't, because we've never really experienced. We've experienced only the world's definition of it. We've experienced the world's definition of love and we've experienced the family and many times the family have turned out to be quite negative towards us and so forth. Or it might have been school or remember the other things that have happened during our childhood. But it's not actually God and God's love that actually have these issues. It's only what we've experienced. Right? So this helps us then disassociate God from the world experience, which is very, very important for your progression, to actually emotionally remove God from your previous experience of love and your previous beliefs about God. 
We need to break, we need to tear that apart. Because if we don't tear that apart, we won't start with a clean slate when it comes with God. We've got all this baggage we're bringing to the relationship, right? Very damaging to do that. It's one of the primary reasons why we have no faith in change, isn't it? Because we do that. So, so we learned, a very important thing to learn, that these feelings... have a different source. Uh, I'll put it like this, are sourced from childhood. Okay, so this is, why, this is how we really feel. We have to, what we've just talked about today is we have to know how we really feel before we can change how we feel. But, but we've got to see that actually a lot of the things that we try to process in terms of our feelings have, are not our feelings at all. They're feelings related to things that we're in denial of. So we learnt another thing in that process, and that is that we choose to blame God and we choose to blame love Instead of choosing to blame the world's view of love and instead of choosing to blame things that have happened in our childhood. And we do that so that we don't have to feel. It's avoidance of emotion, avoidance of things. So then we started looking at the issue of change. And what did we learn there? Well, what's our feelings about change? <laughs> We are basically terrified, yes, we're terrified. And why, do, why are we so terrified? Basically, the main reason is because we don't believe God's good. We don't. We think God's created a nasty universe with nasty laws, nasty results, and if I, if I change, things are just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse till I die, and then I'll die, and it will be bad anyway, and it will be bad for others around me, and who knows what happens after I die. That's scary too. So we're just terrified of everything in the end. Right? We have such a negative viewpoint of change. And can you see, while we have a negative viewpoint of change, it's highly unlikely we're going to want to change. And this is where it got down to the underlying belief we had, remember? The underlying belief was, I want to remain the same. And that is a product of fear and remember we talked about how that changed from childhood as we grew to adulthood. Remember I gave the illustration of learning to walk and how the child just wants to learn to walk and, and it you know, it gets crash, cry, big cry, gets up again, tries again. Crash, cry, big you know, it gets up again, tries again and so forth until it walks. And then, then there's very little pain after that about walking unless you get pretty old and frail and then of course the whole cycle <laughs> seems to go downhill from there but but the reality is that the majority of us get to an adult stage and for some reason we lo we lose this desire to change to grow to keep growing and keep changing and have our life keep growing and keep changing which is a problem and and it, and it's so much of a problem that we're terrified of it which obviously we're going to have to address at some point, right? So, so we have to come to terms with the fact that we feel quite negative about love and come to terms with the fact we feel quite negative about God and come to terms with the fact that we feel quite negative about change. And, and the reality is most of this is just fears and how, what's the antidote to fear? Truth. truth. So, so this is because we refuse to accept truth. We b want to believe all of these things. And remember, again, we talked about the feeling of wanting to believe these things. Wanting to is a problem. We've got to look at what we want to do. And we, we looked at all the justifications like comfort and, and not rocking the boat and ha not needing to take risks and all these other things, not realising that actually 
Change is the rule of the universe. And if I'm refusing change and the universe is changing around me, who knows what's going to happen to me <laughs> under those circumstances? Amber, thanks. Um, my question is, if you know very strongly in your head that something is bad, mm -hmm. so you just stop doing it. Mm -hmm. But isn't that what we talked about, willpower this morning? So we'll get on to this morning's discussion. But basically what you're suggesting is if you know something's bad, just stop doing it. But the problem is there's a feeling in you that wants to do it. Okay. So that's what you need to look at first. Okay. The feeling that you want to. I feel like my head can overpower it though quite quite easily because it's just a little like little things. It can't though. Okay. And um, do what Felix did. Experiment with that. Yep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the end of the day, it can't. And uh, and once you've experimented with that, you'll you'll realise that actually. Yeah, Felix, thanks. I noticed you um, you wrote we feel God is an evil tyrant. Yep. Um, and suggesting that that is for everybody. I feel God wants to meet my like. I feel God should meet my addictions, and I always expected that. But I don't feel that. Is that was that something you were suggesting for everybody? Because I don't feel about that, that about myself. If you truly had a tr faith in God's goodness, why would you keep wanting to break His laws? Surely all of His oh, laws are good. I felt like you know that it's chaotic, but not that God is like. You but, know, but, evil but who's the him? source of the chaos? Um. If God created all things and things are chaotic, then basically aren't you saying God's the creator of chaos? What I'm confused, yeah, that, that would make some sense. What I'm suggesting to you, Felix, is you do have negative beliefs about God. It might not be that extreme, yeah, okay. but, but the reality is there are negative beliefs okay. about God that, that cause you not to trust in God's goodness. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. Okay. Okay, so then we came to this morning. And the subject this morning was how and why I remain unloving. Very good. Yep. It was only it was only on the board for half the day, so we should we should uh, sort of sort of sort of understand that how and why I remain unloving. Okay. Do you remember all the different things that we do to remain unloving? What were they? Could you, if we just yell them out, so denial, so deny, excuse, justify, blame, minimize, minimize, minimize lie yep and we do that with the four things that we went through which were faith truth action and emotion very good so we do that with all of those four things now so so can you see from that discussion that a lot of it is about facing the truth about what is really driving us, isn't it? A lot about the fact that we want to be unloving many times and we choose to be unloving rather than choosing to be loving. And we've had many examples of that raised today already in the discussion. The discussion I had with Jan about her stuff is an example of that. In terms of what, how we choose, why we choose, that there are examples of us choosing to be unloving. Now that means that we need to, um, th this is the, basically what we're emphasising here is the process of self-analysis. Now, if we had a connection with God, self-analysis would barely need to be possible, right? Because all you'd have to do is say, God, what's my problem about this? And God will give you a whole heap of truth about that. You go, ugh, you know, <laughs> feel, feel that for a few weeks. <laughs> and, and then we'd be on to the next thing, right? 
but our blockages with God prevent that from occurring. So what we've got to address first are our blockages with God. So, so rather than... Fo- see, many of you... Yeah, I, I just want to rewind a bit. Many of you are, were drawn to God's truth, to divine truth, because you saw it as sort of a, um, a method of personal progress. Isn't that true? Like a personal development, basically. Yeah, it's not. You will develop... And in fact, you will develop infinitely. But that's not the primary thing to focus your attention on. This is all about relationship with God. And, and what God is trying to draw us into this love-based relationship with him and also experience all the pleasure and rewards, the happiness that comes from such a relationship. That's what it's about. Right? It's not about personal development. So many of us have forgotten to include God in the process of listening to divine truth. <laughs> right? and, and my suggestion to you is that it's pretty funny really, isn't it? <laughs> if you think about it. We call the thing divine truth. And because we're using the def- term divine rather than God, we think of some abstract uh, thing rather than thinking, no, divine means God, right? So, or belonging to God. So... We need to understand that it's all about God's truth, God's love, a relationship with God. And and the reality is, unless I choose to have this relationship with God, my education in love is basically doomed from the beginning. Because it's highly unlikely that I'm going to be a Gandhi or someone else where, where I might, you know, do something that's completely different than the average person on the planet with regard to love. But even Gandhi wasn't fully connecting to God. So, so Gandhi only had the source of love from a perspective of ethical behaviour, what was the right thing to do with regard to interactions with people. But he was a bit neglectful, unfortunately, of women-based <laughs> interactions with men, and, and certain other areas. And this is a trouble. When we rely on people on earth to determine what is loving and what is unloving, we are in the end going to be disappointed in certain respects. But if we can rely on what God says is loving or unloving, because God knows everything about love. So that's our basic summary of what we've covered the last two days. Our focus has been to analyse oneself without judgment. Right. And this is what we would like you to take home from the last two days. To allow yourself to go through this, the truth about how you feel about God, how you feel about love, how you feel about change, why you still want to keep being unloving in your day-to-day life, to really analyse the truth of that, so that you can come to terms with how you're sinning and how you're not, so that you know where you stand, so that you're honest with yourself right from the beginning because without this self-honesty while you lie to yourself no real change is possible so this is our this is the thing we'd like you to take home from these two days that we've just presented is the need to have a desire to accurately analyze oneself without judgment That's what we'd like you to take home. Now, now for many of you, this process of analysis is going to take you the whole next year. Because there are so many things that we do that's loving and unloving and we, we often we don't know the difference even. And It's going to take some discovery, some processes that you engage, some, some action that you're going to need to take to, to experiment with what we're talking about here. Does that make sense? So what we'll encourage you to do is to do that for yourself. Remember, unless you <clears throat> address the blockage with God, unless you address that somehow, education is not going to be possible. So we need to address it. And that's completely under the control of our will. That it's no, Nobody else can do that for us. Somebody can talk to you till they're blue in the face until you're died. And unless you engage your will... No change is actually going to happen. And, and to be frank, it's pointless coming to session after session after session without doing this. 
Because all, all we're doing is just fooling ourselves that something's happening when nothing's really happening. Unless we engage this process, and we'd like to encourage you to engage this process, right, of really discovering what's going on within oneself and to want to know and to be happy that you do know rather than judgmental that you don't, that, about all these things that you've discovered. Right? Be happy that you know because once you know, things can change. You can work your way through different emotions and things can change. All right, so what we'd like to do is give you some homework. Now, this homework is really something that's going to take you some time, but uh, you know, you're know you just going to get a start of it in a day. But we'd like at least to get a start happening, right? So the first question is, how do I personally feel about love? So what are your personal emotions about love? And can I extend that? How do I personally feel about God as well? well what are my real feelings about God? And then I'd like to ask the question, which is included in your outline, am I willing to actually experience the feelings rather than just talk about them or know they're there? So how do I feel about feeling these feelings, in other words? So it's one thing to discover how you really feel, another thing to be prepared to feel the feelings about how you feel. And I, I would like to ask you, all, okay, you need to know What's stopping you from feeling the feelings? Because it, it's only feeling the feelings that are going to release the feelings. And once you've released the feelings, those feelings won't be governing your life anymore. So obviously it's important to feel them. So what are my feelings about experiencing these emotions? Okay. So the second thing is how do I feel about change? So, so remember we listed a whole heap of things on the board, but, but obviously all of you are different. All of you have different reasons for resisting change. They are all false beliefs, and they, many of them are emotions that come from your childhood. So again, the question has to be asked, are you willing to experience those emotions rather than just saying, oh, this is how I feel, and then skipping on to the next thing? Are you willing to actually go through it? What are your blockages to feeling the emotions that will release the, these feelings you have about change? And then the third issue is what are my personal methods that I use to remain unloving? So what, what, what do you personally do to remain unloving? And the same question again about the feelings. Are you willing to feel about the motivations for such things or you just want to talk about them? What, what are you going to do? Are you going to feel them or talk about them? Glenda? What are my personal methods for remaining unloving? It's, they're actually in your outline if you have a copy of that. What are my personal methods for remaining unloving? Okay, are there any questions about that homework? It's all pretty clear? Okay. I want to raise one issue with you in conclusion, and that is this. Who is the most important, uh, important person in your progression? <laughs> yourself do you know why because God's already doing everything God needs to do <laughs> All right. you are the only person who can change you you're the only person who can choose change choose to love you are the most important person 
in your own progression. Right? Now, God can assist you, of course. God's already doing everything. And God's love is going to assist you greatly to change and grow. But, but you have control of that by the exercise of your will. Now, the majority of you don't believe this. The majority of you believe that someone else is better for your progression than you are. The majority of you actually want somebody else to help you progress rather than you help you to progress. The majority of you want assistance from someone else. Right? And I'm already saying to you, God's already giving you all the assistance you need. So if you're not progressing, there's attitudes within oneself that have to change. Not, not things don't have to change with God. Right? And this is a very important thing to understand in terms of responsibility. If my life isn't changing for the better, I am responsible for that outcome. I need to take personal responsibility. Because I'm the most important person. I'm the person that governs what happens to my life. Now God wants you to know that. Right? God wants you to know and understand that and, and to believe that even. God created the universe for you to experience, but unless you use your will, you will in a positive direction, you will only end up in pain and suffering in this universe. God wants you to end up in a place of pleasure and happiness. Right. But God knows how dependent that is on you. He gave you this beautiful gift. It's a, it's a wonderful gift, honestly. The only thing that exceeds it is the gift of God's love, really. It's the only thing that exceeds the gift you've already been given, every one of you, given Right, right from the time of your conception you became aware of it even though that awareness has been slowly building but many of you haven't been using your will right? you haven't understood this gift nor understood how to use it and what I'm suggesting to you is that this gift is the second most precious gift of your entire life right? and, the, and the first precious gift, God's love is completely dependent on this second gift in terms of how you exercise the second gift but it was the very first gift that God gave you and without exercising it no other gifts no other pleasure and no other satisfaction in your life is really possible without exercising it in harmony with truth and love so that's how important it is to you this gift to understand it fully to get it in your heart Get how you can change your life by the exercise of your will. Not your willpower, your will. And we'll talk about more about the differences later so you can recognise the difference. But, but it's very important at this stage you get that your decisions are the most important thing for you to work out what to do with your life. Every decision you make is critical to your future. Uh, as many people who just drive their car down the street realise after they have a prang, <laughs> you know, after they have an accident that might even kill them. Every decision you make in your life is critical. They all are critical decisions made by you inside of your soul and you need to understand the power of this will that exists within you and not give it away to other people. No matter who the other person is, no matter what they claim, never give away your will. Always come to terms with the exercise of your own will. Always decide for yourself what to do with your life. Now, other people will influence you. And there's good influence and there's bad influence. Right? But in the end... You still can make a decision. You can still make the final choice. It is the exercise of your will that governs your life. So what we're going to do in two days' time, in two days time is we're going to focus on the reasons why you've not chosen to use your will. 
Does that make sense? So we want to now look at our fears and our resistances to using our will. Why, why is it with the gift of will, most of us feel like, oh, I'd like to give it back <laughs> to, to God so I don't have to make a decision about it and take responsibility for it. Why is that? Right. And there's, a lot, there's four primary reasons why, which we've already introduced to you, and we'll develop those themes with you further two days' time. Does that make sense? Okay, well, that's the end of our day, guys. Have a, have a good time. Thanks. Have a good time with those decisions you make tomorrow. <laughs> and hopefully you made the decision to come back <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> and if you do, please make it 10.30 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs>